Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again, and today we're going to turn this mini office PC into a gaming PC by adding a GPU. Now recently on the channel, we took a look at this little PC. It's an HP Elite Desk G2 with an i5-6500T. You can pick these up pretty cheap, and they're great for emulation the way they sit. But with the integrated Intel 530 graphics, it's really hard to do any kind of AAA gaming on it. But like I mentioned, the way it sits right now, it's great for emulation. It'll do GameCube, Wii, and even PS2 at full speed. I paid $130 for this unit here, came with 16 gigabytes of RAM, the i5-6500T, and a 256 gigabyte SSD. But in this video, we're going to be adding a GTX 1650 Super over M.2, because after all, this little PC doesn't have a PCIe X16 slot, but we do have a free M.2 slot because this is using a 2.5 inch drive. I've actually just disassembled this. There's a bracket system inside of here. But uh, it's really easy to add an M.2 GPU to something like this with an adapter like this. This is by ADT Link. You can pick these up on Amazon. And they're specifically designed to add a GPU over M.2. We've got all of our power inputs. You can use an ATX power supply or you can use a Dell power supply. I'll show you that in a second. That's really the way to go. But on one side, we've got PCIe X16, and on the other side of this ribbon cable, we have M.2, and this is going to go right in that M.2 slot. And the way this Elite Desk is designed, it's actually pretty perfect for an adapter like this. Uh, what we're going to do here is kind of fold this ribbon cable underneath the adapter, and we're going to place that M.2 right in the free M.2 slot, and that GPU is going to sit right behind the mini PC. Actually, makes everything look really nice once it's all put together. So I'm going to go ahead and just remove this screw here, and I'm going to put the adapter right in the M.2 slot. And once I have that snug down, we can actually fold this right over the back of the whole unit. So initially for this, I wanted to use an AMD card. I have a RX 590 right here, but unfortunately, I just couldn't get this driver to install. I kept getting crashes with it. So I couldn't get AMD to work with it, but as soon as I put in this GTX 1650 Super, booted right up, the driver was installed automatically, and I was good to go. So we're going to slot this right in here, and you might be worried about it blocking off some of the ports on the back of this mini PC, but if you assemble everything before we put this GPU down, we can reach all of the USB, Ethernet, and the power to the mini PC, because after all, we still need to power this PC. So I'll be using the included HP power supply for the PC side of things, but unfortunately the M.2 slot doesn't put out enough power to power a GPU, even the GTX 1650. And that's where this little Dell power supply comes into play. It's 180 watts, I have pulled up to 230 out of it, but we have plenty for this GTX 1650. And this adapter is specifically designed for this Dell power supply to plug right into it. You can either use an ATX power supply, you'll have a lot more cabling, but I would highly suggest using one of these Dell power supplies. They're relatively cheap. I think this one was $25 on eBay. Now, since this is a super variant of the GTX 1650, we do have to plug in a single six pin to the card itself. This adapter does come with the cabling for it. So we'll plug that right in. And once we power up that Dell power supply, it's gonna send more than enough power to this GTX 1650. And like I mentioned, we can still access the power input on the mini PC, Ethernet, and USB before we move that GPU into place. And once we have everything assembled, I actually think it's pretty clean. We still have that HDMI coming off the card, but everything sits in here really nicely. Round back of the adapter and the GPU, we have all of our cabling. We've got that Dell power supply plugged in. We've got our six pin going to the GTX 1650. We've also got Ethernet and power for the mini PC run right under that card. But now, it's time to see how this thing performs. Let's go ahead and boot it up. So as soon as I boot this up, we're going to get power to that GPU from the Dell power supply. Got the fan spinning here, and it should boot directly into Windows. Got our HP logo. It's booting from that 2.5 inch drive. And instead of using the built-in Intel HD 530 graphics on that i5-6500T, we now have a GTX 1650 Super connected to this mini PC. So let me go ahead and grab my keyboard. I'm actually going to move in a bit closer to the screen so we can take a look at this. So I'll open up Task Manager just so you can see exactly what's going on here. All right, so here we are. We've got that i5-6500T, four cores, base clock of 2.5, and all four cores will boost up to 2.8. 16 gigabytes of DDR4, that's what I bought this unit with. 
and the GTX 1650 Super running over M.2. This will take some of the performance away from the Super, but I think we're still going to be able to get some pretty decent performance. Really, what's going to hold us back is this low wattage CPU. I did install Intel's tuning utility, and I turned the boost time up to 128 seconds. I tried to turn the wattage up, but really, when we're gaming with this little CPU here, it's only running at about 20 watts continuously. So let's go ahead and jump into Forza Horizon 5 and see what happens. Alright, so yeah, this is actually working better than I thought it would with that CPU. If we take a look in Afterburner, we've got all four cores pegged out 100% on that CPU. We're at about 2.8 gigahertz on all four cores and 19.8 watts. I'm going to call it 20 there. So yeah, as you can see, it is performing pretty decently. We're at 1080p with a low medium mix. And to tell you the truth, turning those to low really didn't help out at all because you will see some dips and it really comes down to that CPU just being maxed out all the time. But of course, we definitely upped the GPU performance on this mini PC here, even though we're running this over M.2. So up next, we have Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, 1080p, high settings, looking really good. I do get a few dips here and there down to 59, but you know, if that FPS counter wasn't on, I'd probably never notice it. I'd say these fighting games should be really playable, medium, high settings at 1080p. Project Cars 2 actually did much better than I thought it would. 1080p medium settings, I got an average of around 71 FPS by the end of my run here. Now it does jump up way higher than that, but we're really limited by this low wattage CPU. In all of these tests, you'll see this is only pulling about 20 watts. So when it comes to GTA 5, this was really disappointing. I thought I was going to get some great performance out of it. But unfortunately, with that low-end CPU, it's really restricting this game. I got an average of 61 FPS, but I got a low of 38. It did dip on down, and when there's lots of explosions and effects on screen, we're in the 40s. And like I mentioned, it really comes down to that CPU being so low-end. Doom Eternal actually performed pretty decently. Here it is at 1080p with a medium low mix. I got an average of 72 FPS. And finally, I knew it was going to be hard pressed to run this game, we have Cyberpunk 2077. 900p, low settings, crowd density set to low, and I only got an average of 28 FPS out of this game. I did try dropping it down to 720p, but it didn't make a difference because the GPU can hang at around 900p with this game, low settings, but with this little CPU only running at 2.8 gigahertz, it's just not going to cut it. So would I recommend doing something like this? Uh, I personally wouldn't recommend doing this, at least with this system here with the 6500T. If this had just a regular old 6500 in it, we'd get much better performance out of this. But still, when it comes down to it, with these mini office PCs, these CPUs weren't really made to be super high-end for gaming. But as you saw here, I mean, we did get some stuff out of the way. But I wouldn't run out and buy an external M.2 GPU dock specifically for a little PC like this with the 6500T. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. Really appreciate you watching. When I did my initial video just showing off emulation with this mini PC, I had a lot of people asking about an external GPU, so I figured I'd go ahead and make a video. If you want to see anything else running on this machine, just let me know in the comments below. And if you're interested in picking one up, just like it sits, not to add a GPU to it, but for emulation, I'll leave a link in the description. You can pick them up on eBay for pretty cheap. And if you're interested in just seeing what this thing does with emulation all by itself, I'll leave a link to that video in the description. But that's it for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.